welcome all in this tutorial we'll be connecting to athena with our java code uh, we'll be doing this uh, with uh, uh, simba jdbc library which we can uh, import in our maven project so uh, this tutorial is similar to what a newbie java developer does that is uh, connecting to oracle with the java jdbc except in this video we'll be connecting to athena so let's get started so we'll have data in s3 which uh, we'll be querying through our java code uh, through our uh, with JDBC driver and the result of queries can be used in any of the visualization uh, or data analytics applications such as uh, Tableau, Excel or other ISV applications. So coming to why we use Athena JDBC. So think of a scenario, you know, where you want to further analyze the results of the uh, of the Athena. So what you can do is uh, you can query the Athena from your Java code. You can get the results and you want to you can further process the results in your Java code. Yeah. So the second point would be ad hoc analysis of uh, large uh, files in the, in S3. Uh, so let's say that you have uh, uh, files which are you know large in size. Let's say you know one GB or two GB. So instead of uh, loading that files into your uh, memory optimized EC2 instance, what you can do is you can directly fire the query in S3 and only get the data on which you want to do the business logic. So let's dive into some code now. So I'll open my IntelliJ and I'll create a new project here. So this would be a Maven project. Let's create it from a, a quick start archetype. So uh, let's give it a group name. So it, I'll name it as uh, Athena JDBC demo. Okay, so let's move next. <coughs> so uh, this is my uh, Java project. So, so first thing first, we'll create, we'll add our uh, Simba JDBC dependency. So you can go to Maven uh, repository and you can search for uh, at Simba. You can search for Simba Athena JDBC driver and uh, just copy this and uh, add this to your uh, dependency section of the POM. So this is done. Uh, let it auto import and uh, let's create a, a class here that will be that will be using for uh, connecting to Athena. So this is a uh, computer. Okay. So I've created this Athena query executor class. So there are uh, three prerequisites that we need uh, in order to query Athena from our local. The first is uh, S3 output location. So uh, as we know that uh, when we execute any query on, on, in Athena, so uh, it stores the uh, results and metadata in uh, S3 only. So if you need more details, you can watch my first video. Uh, so the second one is uh, AWS access key and secret key. Uh, just like username and password you need to access AWS console. So you need access key and secret key for every programmatic access. So for example, uh, when you are calling uh, AWS service from a Java code or any, any other code, you need to pass this access key and secret key along with that request. Uh, so yeah, so this is very much required. So uh, if you don't know how to get your access key and secret key, I'll uh, show you. So go to AWS console. So you can go to uh, your IAM service. So I have already IAM management console. In the dashboard, you'll see something like uh, delete your root access key. So uh, when you click here, you'll see manage security credentials. So uh, it is a good practice, you know, to delete your root access keys because this provide uh, unrestricted access to your AWS account. So when you go to manage security credentials, uh, you can uh, use uh, access key here. So you can create a new access key uh, if you want to delete this existing one or you can use this because I've already downloaded my secret keys. That's why it is not showing here. So but this is not a good practice. Okay, so better better uh, practice here is uh, you create a username for the programmatic access and uh, you go to users you add a new user, and you'll see here that you uh, when you click programmatic access you will be getting an access key and secret key you know for API calls SDK calls and other development tools yeah this is it 
The third thing is uh, AWS uh, Credential Provider class, uh, which which would be you know a system properties credential provider in our case because we'll set our access key and uh, secret key in uh, system properties. So I've also created one Athena constant uh, uh, interface uh, to provide some constant values. So I'll keep my access key here, secret key, connection URL, and S3 output location. So this connection URL is also a constant value because uh, uh, this there is standard format. Uh, you know you have to provide JDBC, then Athena, then region. Uh, and uh, then you can provide output location here and uh, your query here. So let's copy these things uh, from uh, AWS console. So my S3 output location is, uh, uh, this is uh, Athena output, okay. So when I open this, uh, I can uh, copy. It should be like this. Okay, so I provided my output location. Uh, I have my secret key and uh, access key. I'll copy them also here. Okay, so uh, I have already one table in Athena, which I created in my last video. You can go and check it check it out. So I have a lexity table, which is partitioned. So uh, I, uh, I've written one query, you know, uh, to get a number of call station uh, in every state in year 2016. So I've used, uh, uh, let's format this query. So I've used, you know, aggregate function count here and uh, I group by uh, fuel and state. So I'll be using this query only. So let's copy this query and, and paste it in our IntelliJ. Okay, let's go to query executor now. So first thing first, uh, we'll uh, create one method here. So uh, I'm not using, you know, industry standards here. Uh, obviously, uh, you can, uh, you have to provide these things in your application properties file in case you're using uh, in, in a real time uh, application in, a, in your microservices. So uh, I've written one execute method here. So I need to set uh, system properties. Uh, because I, I'll be using uh, uh, that uh, credential provider only. So I'll uh, call a Java Util Properties class. New properties. Okay. And uh, I'll uh, create connection object here also. And a statement. Now let's. Uh, use try catch flock here to write to create a connection to uh, Athena so first of all uh, we need to set uh, system properties so uh, I'll write one method here set properties okay so in set properties method we'll be setting a uh, uh, first uh, credential properties uh, so we'll be using a system credential provider so we can go uh, system credential provider system properties credential provider so here you can see that uh, this is using AWS access key and secret key so we just need to uh, use uh, we just need to set these two properties so uh, first set system properties okay so system dot set property here and uh, access key value should become should come from constants aws access key so this is done second thing is uh, system dot set property secret key so again come here and uh, just set property here set the property here and uh, aws secret key so these two properties are done so now set set Athena properties properties dot set property first string is uh, s3 output location so all should be in camel case again we have provided s3 output location in constants so just call this similarly set the credentials provider So this is AWS credentials provider class 
set the value as uh, system pre credential provider class from Simba. Copy the package name from here and the class name. So this is it from the set properties. Now call this set properties method here. Also call now class dot for name the driver class. So that would also be a constant. So so I've added already the constant in driver class, which would be com dot simba dot athena dot jdbc dot driver. So this would be throwing uh, an exception last not found exception so let's just you know handle all the exceptions here now create connection here driver manager dot get connection so we need uh, connection URL and properties so we already have connection URL in constants so just copy that and the properties we already are done with so this will throw a SQL exception. So let's just, you know, handle the base exception. So now create the statement from connection. Now create result set. This is the standard process that we use in Oracle JDBC also. query is this one now if you want to see result set metadata then you can include that also so I'll iterate over the result set so I have three columns in the query first is uh, number of stations then fuel and then state all three are string values uh, and uh, so what I'll do is uh, I'll just sys, uh, sys out the three values first one is get string with index one I'll separate them by tap Next is again a string value. Third one is again string value. Okay, so this is done. So everything is done except uh, closing the connection. So let's just close the connection. the statement also okay so this is done uh, yeah let's try running this program so the Athena connection is taking some time here Yeah, you can see the results here in this console. So we are able to connect to Athena and, and query the data. Yeah, so this is it from Athena JDBC. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.